Advanced Financial Modeling, Topic 3, Learning Objective Number 7. Nested Loops, Two-Dimensional Arrays, and VOOP, VBA Loop ten, uh, Templates. So I'm going to show you a program uh, which I've used hundreds of times and it's really, really useful and doesn't really have a, a, a built-in function or even an Excel uh, data analysis function that does the same thing. And that is it takes a vector of our array or matrix of returns, say stock A, stock B, stock C. So it's assets are in columns and periods are in rows. And you input this parameter, which is just a series of returns, and it spits out a covariance matrix. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, Excel has a covariance matrix uh, function that you could just input once, but it's not, you can't just copy it and paste it because the row and column identifiers change. So it's not that easy to input. And Excel also has that under data analysis has a, a tool to create a covariance matrix. But if it does, it only creates this half a matrix one, which doesn't work for our purposes when we use matrix algebra to use to calculate portfolio volatility. So this program is going to take one parameter which is uh, columns of asset returns and spits out a covariance matrix. Um, so here's, here's what we're going to do. The parameter is going to have one, or sorry, the function is going to have one parameter. We can call this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we can call this returns. And let's go ahead and take a look at the program. Um, here's the program. First of all, I'm going to start the program with option base one because I'm going to start manipulating arrays within VBA and it's just so much more uh, straightforward if it the first row and first column is called one one and not zero comma zero zeroth row zeroth column. So option base one has got to be the top of the module, by the way, if you paste this and put it lower in the modules and option base one is not at the top of the module, it, the program is going to blow up. So I got option base one outside my program, and here's my program. The function's called covar map, covariance matrix, has one parameter, returns as range, as range is uh, not needed, by the way. And I have a single quote here, returns or asset periodic returns in columns. Okay, here's where all the work happens. The first thing I need to do is I need to create something called tape temp matrix, and that's gonna be basically a holding place for my covariance matrix. And I, I'm gonna first determine how big it has to be. Now, that's pretty easy because if a user inputs, say, this data, they when they insert the function, they put in three columns and, say, 12 rows, you know there are three stocks. So you know the covariance matrix has to be, the, co the temp temporary matrix has to be a three by three. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dim something called temp matrix, just a, a, a random name. Not completely random, it has the word temp and matrix in it, but it could be, I could name it anything like lose matrix. I do the open close bracket that tells me that it is, or tells VBA that it is an array. I then figure out the size. So I'm going to always use a count in general. And so I'm going to count uh, the number of columns in returns. So if the user gives me three columns, I know there's going to be three stocks. Therefore, I can redim temp matrix as an n by n, which in this case n is equal to three. So I wind up wind up creating a three by three in, in VBA. Okay, this is a very common way of determining uh, the size of a matrix by first counting the rows or the columns. In this case, we had to count the columns. Okay, so now what have we done so far? I've got the returns inside VBA and I've created a blank three by three matrix called temp matrix. And so if I think of temp matrix, right, in this is blank space within VBA, you can think of this three by three matrix. And since I have option base one, I have covariance one, one, first row, first column, first row, second column, first row, third column, and then so on. So I have a blank array, and you can think of the row column identifiers of each one of these items of temp matrix. Here is where I'm going to build or compute, in this case, my nine covariance terms. 
I'm going to use something called a nested for loop. It's a, it's a loop within a loop. I need two loops because I need rows and columns to go from one to three. So here's a common template for creating a, a square matrix in VBA. Set i equal one to n, set j equal one to n. So what are i and j? i is going to effectively be my row counter. j is effectively going to be my column counter variable. So i row, j column. So remember in the, in the, the, for the parameters we input here, uh, n is equal to three. So it's going to set i equal one to three, j equal one to three. It's going to set i initially to a value of 1, j initially to a value of 1. So here's where all the calculation is. Temp matrix ij, which currently is 1, 1, equals application.cover returns.columns 1, comma, returns.columns 1, since i and j are both 1. This is a new little piece of code here. I can refer to the first column of returns remember returns is a parameter here, by just saying dot columns and in brackets one, and I can refer to the second uh, one as uh, dot columns j is equal is still equal to one, sorry, it's equal to one and one. So it's gonna take the covariance of the first column of returns against the first column of returns, and which effectively is a variance uh, calculation, but don't worry about that. So what this is going to do, it's going to calculate this number here. The covariance being one and one. Okay, so it did four, four, did this calculation. It's going to then kick down to next J. Notice J is the inner loop. It's going to send it back up to this J, not to the outer loop. It's going to stay inside the inner loop for a while. Okay, you can think about as this, this being the inner loop between here and here. So now it's gonna come back up to J, set J equal to two. I is still equal to one, but it's gonna set J equal to two. So temp matrix one comma two is the covariance between column one and column two. It's gonna calculate that number. Next J, set J equal to three. Now it's one comma three, and it's gonna calculate this number. So now what it's happened, it said i equal to 1, then j equal to 1, 2, and 3, and then it did covariance 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. First row is done. And also, if you think about it, this has gone through three iterations. It went from i equal to 1, 2, 3. It's done. Once it sets j equal to 3 and calculates the th third covariance term, it then kicks out of the inner loop and heads back to the Next line of code, which is next i, which sends it back up to the initial for loop, setting i equal to 2. All right, now i is equal to 2. Then it goes back to the inner loop, sets j equal to 1. So it's going to do 2 comma 1. Next j, 2, 2. Next j, 2, 3. Finishes that inner loop three times, kicks back out to the i loop, or the uh, you know outer loop sets j equal to 3 and does 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. So once it's done that, i is then done. It's 1, 2, and 3. That last time it does i equal to 3, j equal to 3. This is done because that already went to 3. It's finished. And then the last line of code, covar mat equals temp matrix. And when you input that program, you'll get all your covariance terms. Uh, I want to do something to help you visualize this because you're going to create programs that are very similar to this. The way the loop is worked is working is you again you have this outer loop and that's going to be my row. You can think of this as a row outer loop and a column inner loop. So it's going to set row equal to 1, j equal to 1 2 3. So i equal to 1, j equal to 1 2 3. Next i, i equal to 2, j equal to 1, 2, 3. Next i, i equal to 3, j equal to 1, 2, 3. Next i. So the way the program is working is it's working in this direction. First row, second row, third row. Okay? So that's how this program is working. All right, so that is how it works. So let's go ahead and see how that works when you input it into Excel. All right, on 
do I have already input this program into the code? So it should be in here as temp matrix, I'm sorry, as a covair mat. Notice there's option base one top of the module. If I go to the spreadsheet, I've already done my test data using my data analysis. So I know these values, I just need to fill in these. But here's how I'm going to input this program. Select this entire range. FX, user define, covair mat. There it is. Hit OK. Returns, put in all the data, but not the labels. And then I'm going to do, since I'm entering this set, this formula across an array, I have to, I can't hit enter. If I hit enter, it'll just give me the value in the top left corner. All right, so I have to control shift enter. Whoops. Let's try that one more time. Make sure I got everything right. I was, I was moving things around there. I'm going to delete all this together. By the way, if you make a mistake on an array calculation, you have to delete it all at the same time. I'm going to select all these. Insert, covair mat, put in my returns, control shift enter. And we see that these values are the same. And let's we'll see if this looks right. This should be the same as this one. This one should be the same as this one. This the same one. So we got a great covair mat. So now I can do my M mold, M mold transpose WSW using this matrix, where this is the S covariance matrix. It would not work on this. And so that is setting up a multi-dimensional array within VBA. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do one more slide for this section, and that is I'm going to give you a VBA loop template. Whenever you, and generally in my, in my class, there's one of three types of loops you're going to do. One is, I'll just say, an aggregation loop. And these are usually PV problems, present value problems, future value problems. So you give it a function name. You, you figure out, say, how many cash flows there are, because that's a parameter, say, you know, five cash flows. And you set up a, a loop for i equal one to n. You know, in that case, remember our example, we had five cash flows, next i. And then you, may, you had the name of the function equals name of the function plus. So this is the basic template for writing a VBA program that aggregates cash flows usually present value or, pre, or a future value program. Also, on my exams, there's partial credit. On my assignments, there's partial credit. So if I ask you a program and you realize, oh, it must be aggregation or it is aggregation and you write this down in the program, but you couldn't get it working. Well, you've got, you've got most of the program written. <laughs> it's just a matter of what do you really put here and what is the actual end? So there you go. Aggregation loops look like this. And the key is you have a loop and you have the name of the program equals the name of the program plus that aggregates. Also, in VBA, I often calculate uh, a multi-dimensional array, but sometimes in VBA, I just create a single vector, say a column vector. If you're creating a single column vector, it's a little bit easier. I don't need a multi-dimensional array, but if I'm creating a, uh, a, a, a multi-dimensional array, like the covariance matrix, we'll just start with the harder one. If you know you're going to create a multi-dimensional array within VBA, a covariance matrix, a correlation matrix, a matrix of whatever, you're going to do this. Option base one, function, function name, give it the parameters. Dim something called just a, a you know, just a generic name for the matrix. Dim tip matrix, open close bracket. Then you're going to do a count. Uh, I think all the examples I use that create multi-dimensional arrays in VBA, it's either a row or a column count. So in each, each example, it might be a little bit different why it's a row or if it's a column. Now for the covariance matrix program, it actually it mattered that I had to actually count uh, the columns because the columns were number of assets. So I needed to make sure I count the columns, not the rows. All right, then you redim the temp matrix as a say n by n, if it's a square matrix. Then when you're, when you're filling in the data for your matrix, 
Uh, remember, row counters I, column counters J. It always looks like this, for I equal one to, to, to N, say, or J equal one, and J equal one, in this case, to N, next J, next I. So it's four I, four J, next J, next I, and then the middle part is where all the action happens and you refer to the row and column. Temp matrix I, J equals something. Then you finish the program by saying the name of the program is equal to temp matrix and the function, and you can insert it. So if, if you never got the program working, but you know you're creating a multidimensional array, this is most of the code. You're gonna get a pretty good uh, partial credit on either the assignment problem or on the exam problem. All right, if the program only creates a single column, it's a little bit easier. I'm still gonna dim and figure out a size and redim. But in, in this case, um, I'm just going to redim it as an n by one since it's a, a column vector, one uh, one row. Uh, I'm sorry. In this case, uh, n rows and one column. And then, but the loop, I don't need a nested loop because I only need to, in this case, count the rows for i equal one to n. Next i, and then this fills in. And by the way, if it's a vector, you could skip this and skip, you know, and omit this because it's, it's VBA smart enough to know that if we're dealing with a vector, uh, we can use a single number. But I, I tend to always use the comma one just to let people visualize that are reading my programs. So that's it. These are the templates to create uh, programs that use loops in VBA. So on the next topic, we'll just uh, have a really quick one talking about managing your, your, your library of VBA programs.